We're here in a greenhouse attached to our home and I've been experimenting with the idea of using a hot compost to heat a thermal battery of water in this space. I'd like to share with you what this experiment is all about. We're at the very early stages with it. It's promising, but it could use a lot of work. So stick with us. I thought we'd start inside here and look at this actual tank of water. I'm going to go into detail about all of these steps. Um, but the water is using a simple pump, uh, which in this case is a solar panel attached to a charge controller and a battery. I talk about this setup in another video. We actually, I'm just reusing this uh, from a system that we use in our garden to lift water from the ground into a tank. What I've got here, and I may change this at some point, my hope is to evolve this, and this is where I'd love feedback from folks, to have this passively thermosiphon. But for now I'm using this old bilge pump. It's a 500 gallon per hour bilge pump and I'll submerge that in the water and plug it in. And the water in here right now is right around 42 degrees Fahrenheit in this tank. So pretty cool. A little warmer than outside air but not by much. And once I plug in this setup The water is now going through a circuit in the compost and it's coming out. Let me put this in there. I'm not quite sure the best way to record this. Well, let me do it. Could have rehearsed this. It's coming out at, I see 92, 94. So it's about 50 degrees hotter. It's very, very warm. It feels like bath water. Uh, 101, there was a temperature. Now here's the issue. This runs for a little while with really delightfully warm water and then it runs out of heat after a little bit. And so I'm going to talk about that in detail here. Let's go look at the actual compost. So here we are just on the outside of this greenhouse and this is the compost pile that is basically the engine of this heat. It's not actually that large of a pile. We're constricted by how much space we have between the house, the greenhouse, etc. Um, I took a series of photos while I was assembling this and I'm going to go through them now showing you that basically uh, this was a way to stack some functions. I had to muck out our chicken coop. We have 60 plus chickens. We had deep litter that needed to come out. That material, way too nitrogen rich and hot has some issues as far as being put out directly for the chicken. So in an ideal scenario, that material comes away from the chicken yard. So the main ingredient in here is the bedding from our chickens. I took a circuit, it's probably about 20 feet, of black poly tube that I was able to get for $2 uh, at a reuse center near us. I think if I had just gone out and bought brand new material, a few hundred feet of tubing, this system would run hot all the time. But I think the limiting factor is that smaller circuit of tube. But for two dollars I got that tubing. I embedded it in some old uh, sections of fencing so that it can come out easily later on and ran it in a circuit that the beginning and the end uh, go into the greenhouse. And then started layering up all these layers of the chicken bedding compost some leaves from leaf bags and some other composts and then took some miscanthus sticks that we pruned down and used those to weave in the side walls. So it's, with the exception of the coil in the center, it's a 100% biodegradable compost pile. And here's the crazy part, we're about a week in and this temperature probe reads, uh, I see 156 Fahrenheit. So just under 160 degrees Fahrenheit this pile is running. So an insane amount of heat in this pile during the process of breaking down, creating compost that we can use in the gardens. Now the question is how do we extract that heat more efficiently into the greenhouse, into the soil of the greenhouse as a thermal battery, then ultimately hopefully overcharge that so the excess can be used to heat our home. I think as a uh, basic concept, there are some really compelling aspects to this. I'm hitting some minor technical roadblocks. 
I'm comfortable, if need be, with the idea of committing to a solar panel to run a DC pump in order to circulate this water. In an ideal world, it would be set up in a way where this tank, ideally it's not high up off the ground. I know with thermal siphoning you need to have your storage water above where the heating source is, but I wonder, is there a way to thread in? I've got this threading at the bottom of this stock tank. Is there a way to thread in a fitting that I could have the cold water passively leaving and going into the circuit in the compost pile being warmed up enough to return back into this container slightly warmer? It doesn't need to be 50 degrees warmer, or 80 degrees warmer, but just continually warmer than when it left. Any folks out there have some suggestions for us on how we can think about this basic physical layout uh, moving more towards a passive thermal siphon. I would love to hear from you. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this, you can see this gentle dripping that's happening. Right now we've got a rainwater collection tank that is associated with this greenhouse. It captures all the water that comes off the roof. And in the summer we store that water outside in the tank so that we can water our crops in here. And now what I've done is simply open the flow so that the tank by default drains directly into this tank. What I'd like to do is have an overflow from this tank that goes out into a drip irrigation system in this garden. The thought is, if we can passively accumulate heat or draw heat from the compost into this thermal battery, and then anytime it rains or snow melts into the system and peaks above the storage, that it passively takes that warm water and drips it down into the 4,000 some odd pounds of soil we have in this space. In some ways it's kind of like a lofty hope, but I also feel like it's pretty straightforward. It should be, if only I had a little more technical knowledge. So for those of you that are into this, see this and say, aha, I've got some ideas for him. I would love to hear from you. Uh, maybe you've done something like this or you've got some resources out there. I see a lot of designs, a Jean Payne heating systems where people buy long lengths of new plastic tubing. I know if it was longer, it would accumulate more heat. I really want to keep myself constricted to the ethics of working with the raw ingredients we have here and passively evolving the system to capture more heat. So hopefully this makes sense to you somewhat or it might be compelling. If you have questions, let me know. And as we evolve the system, I certainly will share ideas. My hope of hopes is that that compost pile can keep this space from freezing and maybe even start to heat our home. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to hearing from you.